Welcome back. When the U.S. is uh, planning to mint a trillion dollar coin that's being, uh, of course, speculated about, the uh, Japanese stock market is uh, flying as those charged with monetary policy, desperately uh, trying to introduce inflation that's into their system. And the world is uh, trying to recover from a global financial crisis. One of the key focuses in the investment community at the moment is the role of gold in a portfolio. Now, with a number of new products being brought to the market, Finmeek looks at just how investors can get into the gold market. That's without necessarily being exposed to local gold producers. So let's uh, take a look at this. We've got uh, Finwick, a, Ga a journalist, Garth Tennyson still with us in studio, and Simona Levitt uh, joining us as well from Finwick. Alan Denby, executive of the SA Gold Coin Exchange, joining us at the desk for the conversation. Alan, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Garth, just very quickly, let's uh, break down the fundamentals of why people who are still bullish on gold think it has further to run. Well, just that I read something about a guy talking about peak gold. Um, all bodies are becoming more and more marginal. It's becoming more and more expensive to mine gold. Um, and at the end of the day, you're sitting with a large global population um, and your average person in the street doesn't actually own any physical gold outside of uh, China and India perhaps. So long term, um, the supply and demand fundamentals catch up and gold just continues to rally. That, that is the theory. There is the, uh, the other side of the coin that's, that says as the US um, economy recovers, the dollar strengthens and because gold is priced in dollars, the gold price falls. However, um, gold, the, the, you know, even though the, the US has pumped massive amounts of liquidity into the system in an attempt to devalue the dollar, the dollar it's actually strengthened over the last five years marginally um, and dollar and gold has continued to to outperform mm -hmm. so so in, in perhaps a, that argument really doesn't sound, but what about a low interest rate environment? Because when he's saying that uh, low interest rates, low return on your money, so perhaps put your money into something that is more physical. And also, the, the low interest rate environment is a symptom of the financial difficulty that the world is in. And I think as long as you have a capitalist system where the finan financial system is very, very creaky and people have got a lot of concerns still, um, the demand for an alternative store of value will always be there. Mm -hmm. um, and gold is, has, has been that store of value for time immemorial. Are, are, you just, are you able to keep up with the demand? Is the demand there? I mean, what, what trends have you seen in demand when it comes to gold coins? Well, absolutely. There's certainly an increased demand. I think this, uh, the turning point was in probably 2007 when we had the blowout in the financial markets. And I think ever since then, more and more people are investing in gold. It's not just a one-off. It's an ongoing um, idea to purchase. In fact, many asset managers today are saying that uh, gold should form part of your portfolio. So I think all told, more and more people are acknowledging that with the uncertainty in the financial markets that you should be invested in gold. Ten years ago, um, gold as an asset class was off the table. Today, gold as an asset class is back on the table. So I think as Garth said, there's so many people out there who don't own gold. If you can get every man, one man, one ounce, every person in the world to own in one gold coin mm -hmm. that could be a huge demand and the price can go to who knows five or ten thousand dollars an ounce so I think yeah. with uncertainty in the world gold's position is firmly entrenched for the moment especially with a low interest rate in America Uncertainty, yes, perhaps untrenched forever, uh, but a recovery is certainly starting to show right now. We had, I think it was Chinese uh, data coming through, very encouraging when it comes to that economy. The U.S. economy is, is doing well, and the kind of safety aspect of putting your money into gold is diminishing. So, Simona, do you think, uh, from where you stand right now, that gold has still got that kind of uh, safe haven appeal that it used to have? I think what's so interesting about gold is that just the fact that there are so many drivers that we've mentioned around the table already. Um, so exactly where we're saying part of the driver is from a safe haven asset perspective. I think part of that we will see falling away. Certainly if you look at what the Goldman analysts have been saying, they're actually forecasting for quite a strong quarter in the first quarter of this year and then for gold to actually taper the longer term um, forecasts for gold are actually to see the, the end of the bull run. Um, I still, there are still enough drivers, certainly for this year, to still see um, gold continuing to shine. Um, you know, we've still got the inflation story coming through. Um, we've still got significant demand coming um, from uh, nations like China and India, even though we are going to actually see um, India imposing an import um, duty on gold. Um, and I think we're certainly seeing very strong demand, not just in um, 
gold bullion and the physical side, but also in ETFs and ETNs. They're incredibly popular. I just want to touch on why that is. I mean, and, and you did yourself when you spoke about the inflation side coming in. You talk about recovery, absolutely, but one of the symptoms of a recovery is oil prices immediately rise. Mm -hmm. um, and when oil prices rise, the petrol price rises and that engenders inflation. One of the consequences of all the um, liquidity that's been pumped into the world, particularly in Western markets, is people worried about long-term inflation. Okay, you could argue we haven't, that, that hasn't set in just yet, um, but food prices are, are certainly uh, still at, at quite high um, and elevated levels. And the more inflation you have, the more people look for alternative stores of value. Gold always does well in inflation, in an inflationary. So it's got so, the inflation hedge aspect to it, it's got the safe haven aspect to it. it just seems like it's got uh, have everything running for it, in a sense. Of course, it's, it is being questioned right now. It certainly is being questioned by a lot of investment houses, and I have seen a few reports coming through. But what about, uh, why would you buy a gold coin in South Africa as opposed to, for example, gold jewelry or a gold miner, a gold stock, or why would you buy a gold ETF? I mean, why a gold coin? Well, I think uh, the question of buying gold shares is, uh, needn't be answered. I think there's so many issues at the moment. I don't think one should be looking at buying any gold, uh, any gold mines or any platinum mines at the moment. So mm -hmm. I think you'd really want to buy the physical I think the beauty of gold coins is that you can have 100% control. And I think that's what is perhaps um, not fully stated. I think with the uncertainty in the last number of years, I think people want to have a physical hard asset. And I think that's the thing that is perhaps missed. And that's probably the reason why China and India are such strong buying countries. It's part of their psyche. It's, it's, it's understood by them that part of your wealth should be made up by gold. And I think when we were talking off, off camera, you were explaining to me that there's actually a distinction in the type of people who are investing in gold coins. There you're looking more at the retail market. ETFs mm -hmm. and ETNs lend themselves much more towards um, bigger institutional investors uh, where they're needing a lot more gold when, when they're talking about their portfolios. Mm -hmm. um, what are you seeing from the, the retail investor um, in terms of how are they storing gold? Uh, what are some of the issues around having gold coins? Well, I suppose the main issue of gold coins is storage. But first, so first prize is to have your own safe custody uh, or safe deposit box. Failing that, you have a company like ourselves that will store the coins for the clients. And I suppose that addresses the ETF uh, uh, story. There was zero money invested in gold exchange traded funds. Today it's about a $90 billion industry. Mm -hmm. So I think that that also has supported. It mm -hmm. has made institutional buying and selling of gold so much more easier. But at the end of the day, I think coins were made for the retail buyer, collector. And as I said offline as well, I've found that over the years, the collector who has a longer term view will ultimately profit more than perhaps the investor who's only looking to make money. And of course, you know, you get cold coins with, for example, uh, the inauguration of Nelson Mandela back in 1994. I'm sure that type of gold coin has enormous value right now and, and will have uh, into the future. So as a retail investor, do you advise seeking out those very rare coins and of course with famous faces or just a normal gold coin? Well, that's a good question. You know, from being in the business for a long, long time, I'd say that the average invest, the average person should put 10 or 15% of his money into gold. Two thirds of which are going to bullion, such as Kruger Rams, mm. where you get the gold and the Rand Hedge and all the other players that go along with it. And of course you get a lot of liquidity. You know. mm. With Kruger Rands you can turn into cash instantaneously and that's a very important point. Then you should put a third of that into collectibles. So you might not be an expert, but slowly, slowly you'll build a collection, be it Mandela medallions, the uh, inauguration coin, which in 1994 was issued for 4,400 Rand. Today they're worth about 40,000 Rand. So nobody knows, you, you know, it's like being a share picker. You don't really know which coin is going to really appreciate or work, be worth a lot more, but you buy one of this and one of that for your collection, for your children or your grandchildren. And surprisingly enough, over a period of time, having collected a lot of these items, you'll be pleasantly surprised and find that they are worth a considerable amount of money. And I, I think for, um, 
for the average retail investor sitting at home that doesn't have a huge amount of money and maybe doesn't have a, re a retirement portfolio with one of the major fund managers, the nice thing about gold is, as you said, it's a store of value, but it's also extremely liquid. Uh, I think there's some interesting products that have been launched. So, for example, if you look at the Investec Gold ETN, um, that works quite nicely also for a retail investor because mm. what's built into that product is that it eliminates the currency risk. Whereas for new gold, you actually have to take a dual view. You have to have an idea of where you think gold is going as mm. well as where you think the rand is going. Mm. This product strips it out, so you're really just having to make a play for what you think the gold price is doing. In addition to that, it's actually got a very low cost structure because you're only paying for that so-called quanto effect, which is in you know basis points, so it's really, really small. Another issue, and of course, uh, this is perhaps opening up a can of worms, but I'd like you to comment on it because there was the whole issue around uh, the actual quantity of gold and the, the grade of gold going into gold coins from the South African gold exchange perspective. Can you verify that? Because CNBC Africa did a story on it and of course it was, you know, it was a very controversial issue in South Africa. Well, I'm glad you asked me that, that question and didn't ask me if there's gold in Fort Knox. Um, it really pertained to proof Krugerrands, and there were certain production issues, which sometimes happens in mints. Um, I think they addressed it. I think it involved a couple of hundred coins. I think that the press did confuse the matter with proof Krugerrands and Krugerrands. The blanks are actually minted at the Rand refinery, so there is quality control. Mm -hmm. And I, I think uh, there were certain issues, but uh, as far as I know, it's all been resolved and impacted on a few coins. In fact, over the years, mints actually make mistakes when they make coins. You sometimes find that those error coins are worth a hell of a lot more money than the actual coins themselves. Well, there we go, something to think about, but uh, thank you so much for breaking that down for us today. That was uh, joining us at the desk, Garth Tennyson, Finwick journalist, and uh, Alan Demby, Executive Chairman of the South African Gold Exchange uh, in South Africa, of course. Uh, thanks so much for your insights. We're going into a quick break, more Finwick Money Matters after this, and of course, Simona staying with me at the desk. International Business School in Africa with International Triple 